good evening to everyone. It's certainly good to see you on this Sunday afternoon. We are doing things a little different tonight, and I'm also a little curious how this is going to work out. It's a double feature, two sermons, and um, I'm kind of curious to see how close our lesson is going to be in terms of the subject, because it happens to be the scripture reading for John's lesson is actually going to be brought up here in my sermon, so I'm kind of encouraged that this may very well work out. So, But anyway, it's good to have everyone here, and if you are visiting, we certainly want to reiterate uh, how honored we are to have you here. So, so this will be very abbreviated. So if I would, I'd ask you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I want to read the context of the passage. We're going to be looking at verse 17 and make just very, four very quick points to it. But while you're turning over there, let me just introduce uh, the subject here and what I find so intriguing by this. So the children of Israel had were caught between Pharaoh's army and the Red Sea in the book of Exodus. And the children found themselves in a situation that they could not control. They were filled with fear of certain death. They began to complain and doubt rather than pray. It is here Moses, who was God's mouthpiece to the children of Israel, spoke words that we too must speak to ourselves when surrounded on all sides by life's difficulties. That passage is found in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 and 14. And let me read it here. And it says here, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. So these words demonstrated courage that comes from faith and the reassuring words that the Lord would save them from the Egyptian army. And in verse 14, he states the Lord would fight for them, which is a common theme there in the Old Testament, and all they had to do is to be silent, to watch quietly, and to see him in the battle. And so when we start looking here at verse 17, on this pray without ceasing, it really comes down to the fact of, for us, it's a demonstration of faith. Of God. So let me go ahead and read uh, the passage for you real quickly. And I'm going to start in verse 12 and go through verse 19, again, of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And so Paul writes here, And we urge you, brethren, to recognize these who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, Warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all, see that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, which is going to be our subject here, and in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. So as he's closing the book, there's some request for the church at Thessalonica, and among those things is pray without ceasing. And is a, for a casual reader of it, you may think, well, is, it a, is life a constant prayer? And of course, that's not the case, what he's talking about here. And that's part of the reason that I wanted to bring up at least the context of the passage. But if you look there in terms of pray without ceasing, he really speaks here about of a communion with God. The term here connotes one of devotion, an acknowledgement of his constant presence and our dependence for him. I'd heard a preacher one time that had brought up uh, this passage, and he says, think of it like this, that when you come up out of those waters of baptism, you're handed a phone, and it's already been dialed, and it's connecting with God. And keep that with you for your life, and as you have problems, as you have issues that come up, pick that phone up, and make your concerns, make your requests to God. So real, so real briefly, I just want to make four points here about pray without ceasing. And as I said, the context here really comes down to an issue of faith. So what can we say about this passage, pray without ceasing? Well, point number one, when we pray without ceasing, we look, for, we look to God for clarity, not ourselves and not others. We're looking for clarity from God. As well look to God for all things, our perspective begins to change. The question becomes not how I'm going to solve my problems, but rather how is God going to display his might 
in my circumstances. Our first inclination is not toward friends, toward family, toward some self-help book or other cultural advices, but our reliance toward God. Consider James chapter 1, verse 5 and 6. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. I think that's the scripture reading we had for John, so I'm not going to make any comment other than just to say that, again, as we look for wisdom in prayer, we're looking toward God. Also, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 and 8 here, he says, Jesus, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. The action verbs there of ask, and of seek, and of knock, it's one of a continual nature. It's not something that's just a one-time thing, and then you go on with your life. It's a lifelong process of asking and of seeking and of knocking. God does not resent our prayer request, nor does he ignore them. He gives us what is needed. So our second point that we can make concerning prayer without ceasing is that we create habits that encourage us to pray continually throughout the day. As believers in Christ, we have been invited to engage in a never-ending dialogue with God. In all instances, good or bad, we pray. This requires a disciplined effort and building times in our day we should set aside to pray. Consider Romans chapter 8 verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So Paul had learned to rely on God's strength instead of his own. The Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf, the groanings um, with us. He knows our hearts and what we truly need. So it's not a matter of we're informing God of something, but it's a matter that we're demonstrating we're putting our faith in God, that he is the one that's going to get us through these situations. He is the one that's going to be able to fulfill what needs and what wants that I'm going to have in this life. Also consider the psalmist in Psalms 139, verse 2. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thoughts afar off. So neither our actions or our thoughts or any part of our life can be hid from God, though he seems far away. But again, it goes back to the point that it's a matter of faith. When we put our faith in God and when we pray to him, again, it's a demonstration of our of our um, faith in him. So our third point here. So we have confidence that he is always with us and listens to our unceasing prayers. We can talk to God anytime and anywhere because he is omnipresent. So Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. It says here, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So the Christian age will end when Christ returns and eternal life begins, but until that moment, Jesus will be with his disciples who are doing his work. Also in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ. And again, that term there, it's one of a continual crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So Paul no longer trusted in himself, but in the righteousness of Christ. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So our fourth point here, and our final point, we give up the belief that we control our lives and pray for his will to be done. That's what the prayer, uh, that's what the, prayer without ceasing means. Life is a good reminder we are not in control. God wants us to recognize our limitations and come humbly to him to satisfy our needs. When we do this, we honor God's power and his glory by letting him reign over our lives and accomplishing his purposes for us. 
And so two last verses here. So in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord. And that really is the fundamental wisdom of Proverbs. We're to put our trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's one of total surrender. And lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct you or direct your paths. So it does not mean a life of no difficulties, but life and the Lord has a clear direction and purpose. And that's why it's so important that we do, when we do have whatever challenges and whatever difficulties we have, we should have no hesitation to go to God in prayer for that guidance. And then finally, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So anxiety is an attempt really to carry our own burdens in this present life. But prayer, and the prayer he speaks about here, and the prayer in the context of the passage of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, prayer is yielding it and leaving it to God. So in that verse, three words, and yet it has so much meaning to it and how important that is. And so as Paul ends that letter, one of the things he says, don't forget to make prayer part of your daily life. It's essential for you to get through this life. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and conclude our lesson uh, here, and I'll go ahead now. John?